Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Maddie. I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And in today's video, I thought we would change some things up. I am a big fan of the booktube community. I love to read. And a very popular video in the booktube community is called This Video Ends When I Find a Five Star Read. Now to turn that on its head and to pivot that video idea into the reseller community, I thought it'd be fun if we did This Video Ends When I Gross $500. If you are new around here and you hear a little feet, that is my dog. My dog always thinks when I am filming that it is time for him to become like a superhero. So if you hear little feet, that is just Peanut in the background having way too much fun. So again, this video ends when I gross $500. I am definitely more of a bread and butter bulk reseller. I sell a lot of items, not necessarily for a lot of money. And on top of that, I have also been putting in part-time hours lately. Last month in March, I only listed like 50 new items. And then this month I have listed about 25 new items. So this is definitely more so on a part-time scale. So it might take me a while to gross $500. I will also put what I net on each item. Now, when I talk about net profit, I am just talking about after Poshmark, eBay, Mercari fees. I'm not talking about how much I paid for each item because... I'm a very bad bookkeeper. I don't keep track of every single item, what I paid for it. I pay 99 cents for most of my items, but just for clarification purposes, net means after resale platform fees. So let's go ahead and talk about the past two days. These are my sales from Saturday and Sunday. And I will put the net and the gross in the corner here if you are interested. As always, I am going to start off with Poshmark because I have the most Poshmark sales. Poshmark is definitely still my number one best selling platform, although it is so slow. And I definitely do feel like everyone just wants a very good discount, a very good bargain over there. It is definitely not a great average sale price I have over there, but... At least items are moving. That was really my goal for March is to move items, to get them out of my door because I had, I think at one point, like 1,300 listings and I'm now down to, I think, 1,150 listings. So I made some good progress in moving some old items. That's really my goal here. This is just kind of to show you what you can do if you are part-time or if you have items in your area that are not the most lucrative money-making items. The first item that sold on Poshmark over the weekend is something that I got in November of 2023. The brand on this is called Savannah Jane. Savannah Jane used to be one of my favorite bread and butter brands to resell. It's just like a very bohemian boutique brand. They're known for doing like mixed prints. Often it's a floral print with like a stripe or a cheetah print. And their shirts are not like the best quality. We're talking like viscose rayon, but it was an easy $25. Now I've really seen a slowdown in Savannah Jane pieces. As I said, I got this in November, so it did take a little bit for it to sell. And it only ended up selling for $12, which is an offer that I sent out. I will say an exception to Savannah Jane is any plus size piece can sell for like 30 plus if you're willing to wait a little bit, but just standard sizing, it's not doing that well anymore. This is something I sourced for 99 cents and this is in a size medium. The next item is something that I had for over a year. I got this in February of 2023 for 99 cents at a consignment store, like bulk clear out that they were having. This is actually a shirt that I have sold before in the past and it didn't really do that well the first time that I had sourced it. So why I chose to pick it up again is truly a mystery. The brand on this is We The Free. As you guys know, that is an extension of Free People and this is just a striped long sleeve blouse. There was like a little bit of a peplum hem and it was a nice like knitwear, good closet basic, but Free People and We The Free and their basics, they just don't really do all that well for me. A lot of the times they are sold at TJ Maxx, Macy's, kind of more like discount type of stores. So it's really lost its luster and its resale value. This only ended up selling for $8 after having it for a year. As I said, we are clearing everything out to the left, to the left. 
The next item is something that I got in January of 2024, so I didn't have it for that long. I sourced this for 99 cents, but I did end up letting this go for just $8. Loft is the brand on this. It is an animal print long sleeve top. It was, again, just like a nice neutral basic. I didn't really expect for it to sell that much. Uh, when I'm at my 99 cent day, I do get a lot of these like basics, these bread and butter items that can be bundled that I am hoping to at least move quickly, maybe not for a lot. I am a very fast lister. I have all the tech shortcuts. I use photo room to white out my background. And then I'm telling you, these thumbs, they can go. So to list something and for it not to sell for that much, as long as it's moving fast, I don't really mind. This only ended up selling for $8. As I said, it is in a size medium. The next item to sell on Poshmark was something that I've had since November of 2023. This is something that I got for just 99 cents. The brand on this is Jules. Jules is a brand that is a UK brand. It is primarily known for making rain boots in different patterns, but they do make clothing as well. A lot of the times when you find Jules clothing, it is going to be like an oversized floral print. This was an oversized floral t-shirt dress. This is in a size 10 and this only ended up selling for $12. The next item to sell is yet another 99 cent item. I told you I love my 99 cent day. I understand that a lot of the things I get for 99 cents are not going to be high ticket items, but having that low sourcing cost, it really does help me move things. It really does help those fast flips. And I know these are not exciting flips. I know that these are not the bolos that I can, you know, put as clickbait, but these are what you can find in your area most likely. And if you're like me, you're a fast lister, you don't mind getting these things up and flipping them for just like a smaller profit. This, it's going to be good. This is a realistic flip. So the brand on this is Old Navy. This is a windbreaker. It was color blocked as well. This actually got a lot of likes on it. I did end up relisting it a few times because as I said, I got this in July. So I do relist all of my items using Posher VA after 90 days. It automatically relists my items for me. But this did have a lot of likes throughout. It did only end up selling for $14. And this was in a size large. The next item to sell was an offer that someone sent to me. The brand on this is Athleta. I got this again for 99 cents at my thrift store. This is in like a nice blue periwinkle color. It's in a size medium. It was just a very like oversized t-shirt. This ended up selling for $17 and I got this in February. Athleta is a brand that I used to really love reselling and now I'm like kind of hesitant to pick it up even for 99 cents. But this was a good reassurance that it can sell fast it can do well and that it's flipping. But again, Athleta is definitely not getting the money that it used to get, even for their leggings. So I wouldn't pay up for it, but I do think I am going to continue getting it for 99 cents unless it's like a super outdated or very worn piece. The next item to sell is something that I sent offers out on. So you're gonna see that although this sold for $17 like the Athleta piece because I sent an offer with discounted shipping, I netted a little bit less on this piece. So this sold for $17. I got this in December of 2023. The brand on this is BCBG Generation, which is definitely not a brand that I suggest you seek out. I got this because it was brand new with tags. It was 99 cents and it was this really nice red color. Now, unfortunately, when I did get it home, I did spot a few flaws on it despite it being new with tags. So a good reminder that just because something is new with tag, it doesn't mean that it's in excellent condition, you know, especially with it being stored at a thrift store in their back sorting room. Sometimes things get snagged, sometimes things get damaged. So just a good reminder, look everything over, even if it is brand new with tag. So this piece did have like just a little surface spot on the sleeve, and then it also did have a snag. Both of those flaws, I of course did disclose. I always wanna leave the buyer happy with what they get. So I always do, even if it's something minor, just try my best to list it in the description. I do miss things sometimes, but for the most part, I do try and catch everything. This ended up selling for $17 and this was in a size small. Yet another 99 cent fine. I got this in January. This is the brand Jamie Sadik and this is a 
golfwear line and this is a brand that can do well but I have definitely noticed a decrease in the amount that I'm able to get for it as of late. It used to sell really well on eBay but this actually sold on Poshmark. This is an athletic squirt. It was in like a light gray color. There was one minor stain which again I did disclose and this ended up selling for $12. The next item is a personal item. I really just wanted to make something on this. I sourced this at my thrift store for 99 cents. This is a book. This is the Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. I sell pretty much every single book that I read. I get all my books at the thrift store normally for like anywhere from 99 cents to $3. Once I'm done with it, I just list it and sell it for whatever I can. I love passing books on to someone else. So even though this only sold for $6 and I only netted $1.03 after Poshmark fees, I'm very happy that this sold. Uh, books can be very lucrative. They can sell very well, but best sellers like this where there's a bunch that have been you know, produced, mass marketed, it's not gonna do very well. There's a lot on the market, libraries have it. And I do use my library, I wanna make that clear. I use my library through the Libby app on my Kindle and then I do also go to my physical library but I just find a lot of books at the thrift store that are on good deals. So this was one of them. Um, like I said, if you can find like a rare book or a first edition or something like that, textbooks, there's a lot of money to be made there but bestsellers like this, you're gonna get anywhere from like four to eight dollars. And the last item to sell on Poshmark is this J. Jill tunic. This again was brand new with tags. I got this for 99 cents as well. This is in a really nice green color. It was their garment dyed fabric. It was linen, so perfect material for the season that we're coming up on. And I got this in January. There was one like spot of discoloration on this. So again, another reminder, new with tags doesn't equal perfection. This ended up selling for $18 and this was in the size medium petite. Over the weekend, I did have three eBay sales. I have definitely noticed a slowdown in eBay and that is my own doing because I was not consistently listing over there in March. I was very inconsistent. But I will say, because I wasn't sourcing as much in March, I, my sales did end up like evening out. My net take home profit was about the same as it had been in the past. So that really showed me that I needed to slow down on how much I was sourcing. So I am definitely not sourcing as much as I was in the past because I am detransitioning from being a full-time reseller to a part-time reseller. I just don't wanna have as many pieces. So on eBay, like I said, it has been slower. I did sell three items, starting with the first item. This is, again, another piece I got for 99 cents. This is a Vince cotton t-shirt. It is a navy blue color. It was a scoop neck, and it also had like some ruching on the side. As you guys know, Vince really doesn't do very well anymore unless you can find like phenomenal material like cashmere, leather, etc. This was just cotton, I believe. This was in a size medium and this ended up selling for $14 plus the buyer paid $5.76 for shipping. This was something that I sourced in February. Another item that I sourced in February, I actually showed you guys this piece in my last video and I said that the buyer hadn't paid. Well, the buyer came through, she paid. I'm ecstatic because this is a good sale. This is a City Chic new with tag black dress. It is called the Frill Treasure Dress. This is a maxi length, any sort of City Chic maxi dress that can be worn to a wedding. I will always kind of pay up for. I believe I paid, I think, eight dollars for this at a half off sale and it ended up selling for 39 dollars plus the buyer paid six dollars for shipping so that definitely helped with my goal to reach 500 dollars. and the last sale on ebay from the weekend is definitely a bit of a flop the brand on this is barefoot dreams barefoot dreams has just absolutely gone downhill it's really not even a brand i should be picking up anymore unless it's 99 cents I believe I paid about $3 for this, which I would not do again. This did sell very quickly in that I sourced it in February and it ended up selling for $12 plus the buyer paid $6.55 in shipping, but Barefoot Dreams, it's just now on my list of I will only pay 99 cents for it. So assuming that I did all of my math correctly, if I didn't, I will put a different number on the screen right now, but assuming I did all of my math correctly, I am currently at $189 gross. 
meaning that I still need to gross $311. So we're gonna see how many more days this takes me to reach. If you wanna do this challenge as well, definitely do follow along. You don't have to do $500. You can definitely change the amount, but I will catch back up with you guys on another day and hopefully I will have more sales to report and we hit that $500 gross goal here soon. This is going to be a short and sweet to the point update for day three of this challenge because I only made one sale. I really thought I was gonna make zero sales, so hey, I'm grateful for the one sale. I made one sale last night on eBay for $15.95. This is a Varley pink tank top. Varley is an exercise brand. It used to actually do very well when it first came out, first came into popularity and it sold on revolve but as with most activewear brands it very quickly plummeted and now you just really can't get that much for it so fifteen dollars 95 cents that seemed pretty reasonable this is something that i sourced for 99 cents in october so i'm moving all of these 99 cent finds i'm super happy about it and i do have free shipping on this item so that will definitely eat into my net profit for sure but this is at least a very lightweight item hopefully when i update you guys on day four we'll have more to talk about my gross total between all of these days so far is 204 dollars 95 so i'm not even halfway there after having a very lackluster sales day, it did pick up a little bit on the next day. I did have four sales. Three of them were on Poshmark and one was on eBay. Let's talk about those four sales. So the first sale was an Alice and Olivia dress. This is just an adorable dress in my opinion. It's super bohemian. It is like a patchwork style. I got this in January of 2024 and I did pay up for this. I paid $8 for this and it ended up selling for $42. I had this price significantly higher in hopes that it would sell for around there and it just wasn't. So $42 seemed reasonable enough considering I paid $8. I could have held on to it and maybe made a little bit more, but four months seemed like a good amount of time to just say, okay, this is what I'm going to get for this and accept that. The next item to sell was actually my husband's jacket. He said it no longer fit him. It's too big for him. This is a Lauren Ralph Lauren blazer. This sold really fast. I listed this at the end of March and it sold just a few weeks later. It did only end up selling for $13. Again, because it was my husband's item, I just kind of wanted to move it. I don't really like selling men's pieces and this did take up a little bit more room in storage because it is a bigger, bulkier blazer. I definitely could have held out. This is a nice linen blend. I probably could have gotten like 35 ish dollars if I wanted to hang on to it. But with it just being my husband's old blazer, still in good condition, I, like I said, just wanted to move it. So $13 seemed okay with me. And the last sell was a Bowden piece. This is a piece that I've had for entirely too long. I got this in April of last year, so this took a year to sell, and it only ended up selling for $8. Bowden is so hit or miss for me. This was just a like peasant style blouse. There was a little print on it. It was navy blue. This was in a petite size, and petite sizing doesn't always do the best, so that could have been a deterrent. It was the yellow dot Bowden tag, which is one of the newer tags. It is not the newest, as you guys let me know. The newest Bowden tag is actually all capital letters. This is the yellow dot, so it was probably like a year or two old, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't selling. And then on eBay, I did have one sell that day, and it was a Madewell dusty pink cargo jacket. This only ended up selling for $10, plus the buyer paid $7.65 for shipping. There were some like light surface stains on this jacket, which is why it didn't sell for all that much. I did source this for 99 cents. And I believe I got this in February, so it was a relatively fast sell. Again, could I have held out for more even with the surface staining? Probably, but Madewell just doesn't do very well for me, so it didn't seem worth it to me to like hang on to something in hopes I would get maybe like five or ten dollars more. And with this being like a cargo jacket, it did take up just a little bit more room in my inventory than let's say just like 
a cotton t-shirt. So when it is a bulkier item and I don't have much invested into it, I am okay with moving it at a lower price point. This actually ended up shipping out UPS. That was the cheapest shipping option on eBay, which is always a bit annoying when I have to go to the UPS store as opposed to going to USPS, the post office, or scheduling a package pickup. But it was like $2 difference between USPS services and UPS. So I definitely did want to take advantage of that $2 difference and I chose to go with UPS shipping. So my gross total for day four was $277.95. And honestly, I was just ecstatic to finally be over the halfway mark. It felt good. Now let's talk about day five. Day five, I saw a really nice pickup in sales. I sent out some really aggressive offers on Posh mark and fortunately it panned out that doesn't always pan out sometimes people ignore your really aggressive offers and you just feel like a loser for sending over like 300 offers but it panned out today and we have a lot of sales to talk about on day five the first sale on Poshmark was definitely a bit of a bummer this is a pair of J Crew loafers these were in fantastic condition they were genuine leather and I know I paid up for them. I want to say I paid like five or six dollars for them. These only ended up selling for eleven dollars. I had had these for quite a few months. No one was really interested. In the past I've had really good experience with J. Crew loafers so I'm not really sure. I know snake print is definitely not as popular as it used to be. People used to view snake print as literally like a neutral and now I've noticed it's really not doing as well. Same with animal print. So I just let it go for $11. These were in a size 10, so it was a good size as well. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I'm definitely going to be more mindful when I pick up J. Crew loafers from now on. The next item to sell is another item that I did pay up for. I got this at my local buy sell trade store, and I wanna say I paid about $15 for this. I would no longer pay up for this brand because it is a brand that is sold at TJ Maxx now. You guys know how I feel about that. Death by TJ Maxx. The brand on this is an anthropology sub brand called Love the Label. This dress was brand new with tag. It was a puff sleeve mini dress in like a brownish orange color. Really on trend, really cute. The pattern was not my favorite, it was a bit much. I got this in November of 2023, so it did take a little bit to resell, and this ended up selling for $46. So considering I invested about 15 into that, that is just not the best flip in the world to me. I'm glad I still, you know, made a decent-ish profit off of it, but I just don't like paying up for items unless I know that they're going to sell really quickly. So I wouldn't pay up for Love the Label again. Then we have a four piece of bundle. I have to take a minute to thank Tiffany. Tiffany is a viewer just like you. That made me think of PBS. If you guys ever watched all the PBS shows, they always say that at the end, like viewers just like you. And Tiffany is wonderful. She is one of my co most consistent buyers. She is always so, so sweet. And I just really appreciate you more than you know, Tiffany. So thank you for purchasing this bundle. She purchased four pieces for $70. The first piece is something that I got for 99 cents. And I posted this really recently. This is an American Eagle white linen button down. I originally thought that this was like a woman's tunic and then having looked at the measurements and having looked at it, I realized very quickly that this is actually a men's shirt. So this is a men's American Eagle button down. Then another 99 cent piece. This is Kalia by Carrie Underwood. This is a really cute skirt. Skirts are always really in during the summer and I listed this in February. The next piece is another 99 cent find. This is a kimono by American Eagle. I've had this since August of 2023, so this one did stick around for a little bit, but this is a really cute kimono. I'm a big fan of kimonos personally. That was old tag American Eagle. And the last item, I did pay up for these. I think I paid about $6 for these. This is an anthropology sub brand called Etoile, and it was even the new anthropology tag because it said anthropology Etoile. And this is a pair of really cute printed green pull-on pants. They're like the type of dressy pant where you look dressed up because they have a pattern on them, but they're like actually really comfy pants. And I got those pants in 
September of 2023. So all of those sold for $70. And thank you so much, Tiffany. She had no idea that I'm doing this challenge, but that definitely did help me get closer to my $500 gross total goal. The next item to sell on Poshmark is a White House Black Market dress. This is again, another 99 cent fine. I listed this in November of 2023. This was in a size 14, so a really fantastic size. And this ended up selling for $17. A really pretty pattern on this as well and this is a long sleeve dress so it really does go to show you that things are selling all the time doesn't really matter as much like seasonality people are just shopping if i think something's cute even if it's out of season i'll still buy it moving on to ebay i do have two ebay purchases to talk about the first purchase is something that i got for free this is a new tag lululemon sports bra this is the energy bra and it was like in a plum purple color really crisscross back this was in a size four my mom gave me this to resell she said it didn't fit her and i'm always appreciative of free inventory lululemon doesn't sell for as much as it used to that is definitely true but i will say that the sports bras do sell pretty quickly if you price them right i had this listed for i believe like 38 someone sent me an 18 dollars offer and it was just a really fast flip and i got it for free so i went ahead and accepted they also paid five dollars and fifty cents for shipping this sold like two days after i listed it it was a super fast sell and then the other item that sold on eBay was a 99 cent fine. You guys know most of my items that I list are 99 cent finds. This is a Zara plaid v-neck mini dress. So this is an old, old tag Zara. And I really picked this up just because of the plaid print. It was like a nice business style. You could wear it with tights and some flats and it would be a really cute look. This is something that I listed in February of this year. So a relatively quick sale. And this sold for $14.25, plus the buyer paid $5.75 for shipping. That brings my gross total to $454.20. We are so close. Hopefully it only takes me one more day to reach my 500 gross total goal, but you never know with reselling. As you guys saw, I had one day where I sold one item for $15 and then I had two like pretty good days for me. So I will keep you guys updated. We're almost there. Let's talk about my sales. So starting off first on Poshmark, I sold an ASOS strapless dress. This was a floral dress. ASOS is definitely not a brand that I seek out. It just really doesn't do very well. It's kind of fast fashion-esque and I just noticed it's not really worth it. It does sit around for a while. This is a piece I've had since November of 2023. So it did take quite a few months to sell and it did only end up selling for $14. Plus, if you guys did not know, just a quick little like pro tip, do not use ASOS stock photos because they will immediately report you like less than 12 hours. It will be taken down and your listing will be gone. The next item to sell on Poshmark was something that I've had since February of 2024. This is something that I paid just 99 cents for and this is an express chunky knit sweater. It's a black cardigan sweater. It had pearl detail all along the collar. I thought it was really, really cute. A little bit oversized, a size large, and this ended up selling for $17. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit how long I've had this next item, but we keep it real here, so I will tell you. I've had this next item since September of 2021. Yeah, let that sink in. Very long time. And it only ended up selling for $6. So I definitely did lose like a dollar or two on the sale, but this is a Harry Potter seeker jersey. Harry Potter items are definitely something I would only pay 99 cents for. And this piece I just wouldn't even get anymore because this piece I think was kind of like homemade or fast fashion-esque and that it had no tags. Like honestly, it looks like something that could have been made like on a Cricut machine. So it was just a very bad purchase, but I hope this person enjoys it. It is, like I said, a seeker jersey, so it is for Quidditch. So. It, it's cute for what it is, but definitely not something I would pick up anymore. And the last item to sell on Poshmark is a Talbot green circular printed skirt. This is in a size 10 petite, and this is something that I've had for over a year. I got this in a thread up mystery box. It was like the 50 pound mystery box, and I made back my money on that box a very long time ago. I ended up receiving like two sailor dresses in the box and that paid for about half of the box and then 
There were a few other standouts and most of it was just bread and butter sales such as this one. This is something that did take a while to sell just because skirts can be a tough sell and with this just being Talbots and Petite, that's kind of like factor stacking against it. It did end up selling for $15 and like I said, I already made my money back off of that. So very happy with that. With that Talbot sale, I was extremely happy because it did push me over the edge. It got me to my 500 gross total goal. It actually got me to $506.20. So let's talk about everything. How many pieces it took me to get there, etc., etc., etc. Um, so my gross profit was $506.20. Now my net profit was only $357.24, which is a little bit more than 30%. And that makes sense because there's selling fees on all of the platforms. That was 31 items. It took me 31 items to get there. So again, definitely a bulk reseller. And this is really more of a part-time snapshot because I pretty much didn't list at all in... Mart. Then in April so far, I've listed I think like 20 new items, but it was not concurrent with this video. It was like a little bit after the video. So all of these items were pretty much older sales. So that shows you if you are someone who only has time for part time, it will take you a while to hit 500 gross, but you can do it. So that is my journey to $500 in gross sales. This video is now going to end because I hit it. Let me know in the comments down below what have your best sales been lately. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.